So the Huntsman Pro Take Gear allows you to change a lot of the settings like the actuation point and rapid trigger sensitivity out of the box without having you to install the software and today I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, first of all, when you press the function button, all of the keys that have assigned an alternative functionality light up. Like for example, at the top we have F11, F12 assigned to change the brightness of the keyboard and they light up. But the most interesting part is on the left. We have tab button, which allows you to change the actuation point of all of the keys on the keyboard and caps, which allows you to change rapid trigger sensitivity on all of the keys that have been activated for rapid trigger. So I'm just going to access the first menu, which is the uh, actuation point menu. As you can see, all of these um, buttons have a light up in green, which means that uh, we are changing the, uh, the actuation point for all of the buttons and the screen becomes active. Uh, there's two dots on the screen. The white one represents the current actuation level for the button and the green dot represents uh, the actuation point uh, where the button becomes active. So if you move to the right, uh, it goes slower up to 3.6 millimeters. And when you go to the left, it goes all the way up, up to 0.1 millimeter. And it, the jump is 0.4. So we have 0.1, then it's 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 1.2, 1.6 and so on and so forth. The safe actuation level is somewhere between 0.8 and 1.2. You don't want to have it too sensitive because then you can press the buttons um, accidentally and then become overly sensitive. Now, if you want to save the changes, you just press escape, you exit the menu and the changes are applied. So now you have to press the button up to 1.2 millimeter in order to activate it. So now let's access rapid trigger sensitivity menu. As the, and as you can see, not all of the keys light up, which means that not all of the keys have assigned rapid trigger functionality. You can change it in Razer software. Uh, you cannot change it like here out of the box without without using the software. But uh, if you same as before uh, on the LED small LED menu we have on the right, you can see the orange dot, and the orange dot represents the sensitivity of the rapid trigger. But this time, the more you go to the left, the more sensitive it becomes. Let me show you. For example, when I'm starting to press the A button. As soon as I pass the activation point, it goes green. And as soon as I start releasing it, it goes back to red, which means it's not active. Green is active, red is inactive. So the sensitivity is really, really, really big. And you could accidentally activate it multiple times. As you can see, it's very easy to spam, but it's also very easy to activate by mistake. So I would suggest going somewhere in the middle. This way, when you press the button and start releasing it, it still is very sensitive just not as sensitive as before. So somewhere around the fifth, sixth dot is, in my, in my opinion, uh, the sweet spot because as you can see, it changes uh, dramatically and there is some travel required for the key to reset, but it's a reasonable amount. So again, if you want to save the changes, you just press escape, the changes are saved. You can also use the function keys and the uh, shortcut keys here, if page up, page down, home, etc to access your predefined profiles, which you can set in the software. And let's jump into the software and I'll show you what you can do in there. All right, so now we are in the Razer's uh, software, uh, Razer Synapse, where you can really customize your keyboard, change a lot of settings. Uh, I'm just going to go to the default, default view so you can navigate with me. Uh, this is the default view, which you'll probably see. Uh, it's clean, it's uh, not too cluttered. It's okay, uh, I've seen worse. So if you want to ch access your keyboard and change it, you just press on the keyboard and then you can start uh, adjusting it to your needs. Um, so you can change the basic stuff like uh, uh, enable gaming mode, which will disable Windows key and also can disable Alt F4 so you won't get trolled during your gameplay. Uh, but also you can do a lot of different things like binding uh, WSD to controller joystick, binding QE to controller left and right triggers, and so on and so forth. And here, when you press the menu, you can also adjust other things like assigning different uh, buttons to different keys on the keyboard. And for example, I think the, the one you should probably change is the media button, which you can, um, it's, it's like it opens, it, by default, it opens an Xbox menu, but you can change it to launch your favorite game, uh, launch an app, uh, whatever you want, really. So we're not going to do that. We're going to focus mainly on the actuation and on the RGB. So when you move to actuation tab, uh, you can change the settings for each of the keys individually. Uh, which is great and you can also select all of them and change the settings for, to all of them let's let's start with uh, setting the actuation point to two millimeters for all of the keys 
this is already set and now let's deselect all of the keys and let's say that for example for w s a and d i wanted to actuate at one millimeter because i wanted faster response time when playing the games uh, let's say let's uh, deselect again let's say that for q and e and r i want the actuation to be at 1.2 not too sensitive because it's probably used for actions in games so i don't want it to have too sensitive and let's deselect it again as you can if you hover over the button you can see where the actuation point is which is really great really appreciate that really good that razor decided to do it but for example uh, let, let's change the actuation point of the shift button to be 2.5 uh, and so on okay uh deselect again and let's say you want the rapid trigger functionality enabled for some of the keys uh let's uh, say that we want q w and so on all of the keys that we usually use for movement, action, and so on uh, to be set, to be enabled. So I'm just going to enable rapid trigger. And here you can also change the sensitivity. Same as before, same as, uh, same as on the keyboard. We want to have the sensitivity um, changed uh, for the keys. So let's say that I want it to be maybe a bit more sensitive. Uh, maybe a bit less sensitive sorry but maybe i want to have it a bit more sensitive i would suggest not going all the way to the right because it just as soon as you even think about releasing the button it just becomes active again so it's very easy to uh, accidentally trigger rapid trigger uh, i would suggest somewhere between 0 0.4 to maybe 0 0.6 uh, i guess is the sweet spot is that then it gets really responsive without being overly sensitive if that, make, if that makes sense you can also change uh, which also is a great feature separate up and down keystroke sensitivity so for example for downstroke when i'm pressing down i can change it to be more sensitive but when i'm uh, releasing uh, maybe uh, i want it to be slightly less sensitive for example let's let's do it like that 0 0.4 for downstroke and 0 0.6 for upstroke so so what does it mean well it basically means that if you press a button and start releasing it it will only reset after 0 0.6 millimeters and again if you want to press it again it will become active after 0 0.4 millimeters so this asymmetric rapid trigger i think is really helpful because it helps you reduce the overly sensitive buttons because if, if you, you if you want to have it very sensitive like with downstroke 0 0.2 but also you don't want to have it too sensitive when you're starting to release the button this is the perfect option to change uh, let's move on to lighting i'm all, i'm very disappointed that uh, the lighting does not uh, apply to the profile that you save because as soon as you close the software the the, the lighting comes back to default so like the st standard toggle effect for example and here you can change the basic effects like change the brightness of the keys uh, change where the uh, when and if the keyboard should turn off when it comes to lighting and you can also change the effect if you want more advanced effects that sync with your games and applications and so on you have to have chroma studio but today we'll just look at the st standard uh, effects that we have here uh, ambient awareness uh, which basically uh, targets the, your screen and um, matches the color of the keyboard to, uh, to, to what you have displayed on the screen audio meter uh, that's like you know an odd standard audio meter breathing uh fire reactive and so on and so forth my favorite one is of course the static color usually it's something blue yeah but as soon as you like unplug your uh, as soon as you turn off uh, the software it's going to be uh reset to standard settings uh so if you want to if you want to save a profile if you want to change a profile this is where you do it uh you can rename a profile you can add a profile let's, for example let's add a new one uh this is just the name of, of of my desktop so let's rename it let's call it test and if you want to have the test profile transferred to the keyboard and assigned to one of the shortcuts you can just move it here and overwrite and now you have on the number four you have a test profile and yeah that's basically it uh the software allows you for much more customizability and the good thing is that as for example if we assign the fps uh, let me go back just quickly to the actuation if we have the fps profile and we assign rapid trigger even though we disable the software we still get the rapid trigger assigned to each and every button so if you would press function caps and would like to change the rapid trigger uh, function for different keys the keyboard will remember which keys should have rapid trigger enabled I'm a bit surprised you cannot enable rapid trigger like you can on Steel Series, where you write, either enable it on all of the keys or disable it on all of the keys. It's not possible here. 
but just download the software, assign rapid trigger whenever you want, uninstall it, close it, whatever, and it stays on your keyboard forever. You don't have to do it ever again. So I guess that's that's fair, okay? So anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you did find it helpful, consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this, and it also helps the channel grow and motivates me to make more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Laser, and I'll see you soon.